with basics today because it's all coming together and I'll lead up to the big punchline of the whole video today with a bunch of review and in context so that when I deliver that final punishing blow you can feel it with the full weight of the reality of its implications okay so all right dude here we go dude okay <laughs> so remember we talked about how um when you know, March 2020 crash, you know, this this is obviously the start of a massive, you know, five wave move. Well, here's what's funny. And I think I actually did talk about this previously, but I'll just reiterate. You could say that this is the start of this whole wave, or you could say that this is the start of the whole wave. It doesn't matter. We've talked about fractals, right? This is the idea of fractals. What I want to do here is link the top of the 2017 market to the top of the 2021 market that's what i want to do and i'm going to use elliott waves to link it all up and then really solidify this three-headed reversal structure thesis that we've got going and then apply it to something else but first let's just review this is important so i want to start by connecting the abc correction that occurred after this top into this move here right so how does this end up being here well First, we'll start by acknowledging this very strange but very clear ABC correction. And this is why they call it the C heart wrencher. I mean, seriously, dude. That's why they call it the C heart wrencher. Whose heart wasn't wrenched, right? That's the point. Even you thought you might have been a genius. You're like buying like, oh, yeah. Oh, nope. You got wrenched, son. You got wrenched. Like, that's the C heart wrencher right there. But look how beautifully it flows into this perfect wave one. And that wave one, of course, leads to a wave two down, and the reason why that's just a perfect wave one and wave two is because look how low wave two comes down. It's almost as low as where wave one began. Classic, right? And then that makes this very simple and straightforward because it's very easy to see that this is obviously a massive wave three, right? That's why these little fractal things, they're all built into the fives and the threes and stuff. So it doesn't really matter as long as you can almost use that psychology, right? And this is why this is such an obvious wave three. The psychology, this is a classic wave three psychology, massive, epic, epic, euphoric run. And it's it's like the bulk, it's the meat of the big move, right? And then, of course, that leads into wave four down right here. And very typical wave five, wave five completes ever so slightly above where wave three and four intersect. That's a pattern. That's a nuance that we've been seeing in these markets in this current five wave move cycle. Little nuance. We just watch for those things. You can think about the psychology of it and try to wrap your head around what you might have been thinking about during these times, right? And see how the waves sort of play out within that right so if this is the top of a five wave move and we've completed one two three four five where are you in now you're in that a b c correction that gives you that three headed reversal structure we've talked so much about and we're at the point where b and c will intersect that's where we're leading up to that 702 retracement we've talked about you know here is that moment in the previous cycle and if we look back through the history of the all coins, they obviously pumped into that retracement. We're in this larger, grander. This is, you can see, like just with your eyes alone, look how much more grand this one is, right? This is just, it's huge. It's huge by comparison. And, and obviously the money in it is reflected in the geometry of it, right? It's just a bigger, it's a bigger thing. And so this is grinding. This is taking time because this process, this rotation of capital will take time to play out. Okay. So if we've, if we've established, you know, this ABC correction idea and we know exactly where we are on the cycle, we've reviewed all this. Let's zoom in a little bit further and look at what might be going on here. Now we've talked a little bit about inverting charts, right? Just to kind of remove certain biases, but on a very basic level, when we invert the chart, we're just looking at these local tops because every top 
has an ABC correction built into it. So every top is a bottom, right? It's the, everything that applies on the upside applies on the downside. These are equal and opposite, you know, reaction shapes. You know, ABC corrections, Elliott waves go both ways and on all time frames, all this different stuff. These are just wave patterns. That's one thing to think about. I was really thinking about that this week of the idea. Like, these are just waves. Think about waves. I love the ocean and swimming. Swimming is like my favorite. Literally, it's my all-time actual favorite exercise activity, swimming. And I, and I love waves. And I'm like, dude, holy hell, I'm starting to literally can <laughs> make that connection. So that's cool. Think about it, though. It's not that complicated. But if we're saying that everything is equal and opposite and all is true on both sides of the equations, then we're going to have to acknowledge this January 24th top, which is, you know, the bottom or whatever. But on this chart, it's in this direction. We're going to call it a top. So when you have this top, you have an ABC correction coming in, right? Yeah, exactly. That ABC correction is coming to take us to this point, which, you know, we're looking at the chart upside down, try to stay with it. But yeah, this is where our goal point is. So how could we potentially get there? Well, we're definitely going to have an ABC correction. That ABC correction on this direction is going to align with the ABC correction on the other direction, like literally puzzle pieces linking together. So how does this maybe look? A few different ways you could look at it. One way of looking at it is that you've already done a lot of the work. I don't know if I agree with that, but look at that. A, B, and now you're on that C heart wrencher to take you there, right? That's possible, right? That looks like a nice M shape. I'll get rid of these, but now you can see that clear M shape, right? <laughs> Literally right there. It's always a harmonic pattern. So that's one way. That's one way. I think what makes more sense is that you're going to get a 702 retracement on this ABC correction, right? You see that all the time. So it could be something more like A, and that B is your 702 retracement, right? That's what we've seen a lot in all directions on all sides. And then you have your C heart wrencher correction, which takes you, I mean, now you can see, you know, these levels up here, these are higher than the 702 on the other direction. I'm probably sounding confusing now, but look at that M. It's just a perfect M. And it aligns with that ABC correction in this direction. So maybe we have a little bit more downside, but it would make sense to get a 702 retracement, or I guess I overshot that in my uh, Elliott wave. But you know what I mean? Like around this level, it doesn't have to be exactly 702. As we've seen, these levels are very approximate and they're violated all the time, but you can see the basic archetypal structure. If you use those levels as sort of reference points for those points at which price reverses, right? Like we know that 702 is often a reversal level. Sometimes it gets goes higher. Sometimes it goes lower. We don't know. But either way, it's probably within the context of this ABC correction, right? Okay. So now if we flip the chart back over, then it's just like, hello, basics. Like, oh, a W, a bearish. Like, oh, everything makes so much sense. I can't even believe it, right? It's just like, oh my God, right? So everything's possible, right? So you could, you could go higher than the 702. I mean, now it's like, I don't care. That's way too specific. All I know is that, yep, obviously you're going to form a bearish W pattern to complete the ABC correction on this three-headed reversal structure. You know, the W's go down. We're expecting a down move here. So as you can see, this inverted ABC correction is nothing more than, you know, the B leg of our ABC correction, right? Just reiterating all the points so it's so so clear right okay right so back to everything is hopefully making complete sense all there's clarity you can see everything so here's here's where it gets pretty crazy Ooh, anybody recognize that shape maybe if i flip it upside down looking at the dow jones right now anybody recognize that shape well, I see a giant head, and I see a left shoulder, <laughs> and I see a right shoulder. <laughs> okay, how many times have we talked about the three-headed reversal structure? I just reiterated it on Bitcoin. Well, guess what? We've got an inverse one on the Dow Jones, on the stock market. You know, the one that I keep saying is basically controlling where Bitcoin goes because all these assets are sort of following the Dow Jones. They're taking the free money out of the Dow Jones and putting it in other assets. Well, that sucker just made a massive reversal pattern on the most like standard classic 
self-fulfilling shape ever, right? And here's something to consider, though. I wouldn't necessarily say this structure is complete because, as we've talked about on all directions of everything, you're probably still looking for a 702 retracement on this. I'll just flip it back one more time to show you exactly what I mean. This guy is working its way. Probably, probably, we don't know, probably to about that level, you know, of course, right? Because uh, now I'm getting all my inverses unverted, but it's fine because this is, remember, this is a wave one. I'm talking upside down, but this is a wave one right here. What does wave two do? It goes low and it comes almost as low as wave one began. So 702 is, you know, that's very realistically what's coming up in the cards here. And just look how perfect it would be. You know, basic ABC correction would look something like this. You know, A, B, C, right? And that's going to bring us, you know what I mean? How all these puzzle pieces lock together like that. So this B leg, you know, for this inverted wave count is definitely likely not completed because, now I'll just get rid of this. If I flip it back over, you can see that the left shoulder here is a fair bit lower than we are currently on this right shoulder. We may probably go lower than that, I would think. I don't know, though. You know what? You don't know. I'm just saying that because of wave one, what a wave one is likely to do. Once we see that inverted head and shoulders pattern, I mean, it just really validates the whole wave count. And it's like, do we even need how much more validation do we need? It's literally like it's almost like who wouldn't have seen that you're going to have a head and shoulders reversal pattern. I mean, you literally did have it on the upside here as well, right? You had a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. And remember my old chart, I'll just show it one more time, on the spy, I literally drew that when it topped because that's what it was doing. Head, head and shoulder reversal. I drew that. You know, I mean, it wasn't exactly accurate, but it was just like, yeah, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And then once you complete that right shoulder, you're starting wave one up you got a wave two down, working its way down to get into a wave three, right? That's what's going on here. And look how all of these indexes are basically forming a similar pattern, that head and shoulder structure, you know, like that's pretty self-fulfilling. I mean, talk about self-fulfilling. That's, that's maybe one of the most obvious ones there is because you can see it with your naked eyes. You don't even need to think about Fibonacci and wave counts and stuff. You can just be like, Oh, yep, we've seen that one before, right? But yeah, when you see that shape, I mean, it's just, it's on. It's what you'd expect. It's really what you'd expect for a wave one and then a wave two down. I mean, here's what's interesting, and it all fits in the context of waves, is if this, this, you know, on the spy breaks below, any of these break below that February 24th, you know, ultimate capitulation where, you know, the bombs were dropping on TV and everything like that, if it goes lower than that, well, then you can actually still recontextualize that in another wave count. For example, you know, just to show you how my brain works, you know what I mean? Like you could have one of these still before you hit that final wave to the upside. You know what I mean? And just to show you what I mean on the Dow Jones. But so, you know, it's just like all of these different patterns are still within that larger five wave pattern. So you can continue to find the different variations that might exist. Like, obviously, this head and shoulders looks relatively, you know, convincing, promising. It's like a very, very clear structure that's been defined. But we can also, you know, just think about what would happen if that didn't play out like that, right? And kind of, like, consider both sides of the equation. Even if it didn't play out and you had an ABC correction that took you like that, and all of this was just the A leg when, you know, the bombs are dropping, right? This is still just the A leg. Then you hit up that B leg, and then you're going to be in a deeper C leg. That's all possible. And if that's the case, then, you know, make money and buy that because that's going to change your life. Still, all of the theses are intact. So you just got to consider all these things. And so when I consider how the timeline could continue to draw out, things could draw out. We don't know. We, you know, we don't know, but we all know the Dow Jones has this wave five setup going on. And this wave four that we thought ended on February 24th, it still could be a fractal of a larger correction, right? 
I'm I'm now I'm getting like super dark on these patterns, but it's just like I'm it's not dark for me. Like I hope it's not scaring anybody. I'm I'm just saying like anything of the any of these realities is possible and you should be prepared for all of them. And the only thing of preparation is just buy more, right? Just buy. Keep buying all the way down. Commit to the thesis. You know, no, the the prices don't matter. Right. These shapes are just playing out and on different levels, on different time frames. And we're trying to see them in real time. But it's like that's why the fractal trip is so trippy, because, you know, you could see an ABC correction, but that ABC correction might have to continue to spiral out in more fractals. Right. So this this idea. So what do you do? You just commit at all costs. You literally commit at all costs and you're just going to keep buying all the way down. And that's why. Check this out. Perfect. ZRX. I mean, yeah, I obviously should have sold all of it. I only sold a lot of it, but not all of it. But like 1618, a perfect, look at how perfect this is. You start to see the M's forming, right? You see that M right there? See that M forming? You got a signal, right? Like it's like, okay, this has got some bullish momentum, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen right away because what af what happens after you get that M? turns into a nice W, right? So you can expect, oh, a little bit more. But you know that M is going to still play out at some point, and there you go, right? Like, that that's how, a per, that's how a lot of these work. Basically, the bottom line is if I'm prepared to buy indefinitely, if I'm prepared to buy all the way down, and I'm not ever going to change my thesis, well, then I have to play to my advantages and sell pumps like these, you know, uh, sell, like keep building that stack of USDC coins. Yes, we are looking for a massive pump here. We are looking for these, you know, these prophecies to be fulfilled and they will be fulfilled. These Fibonacci prophecies, they will be fulfilled, but we have to hedge on the side that that fulfillment could take time. It, it won't necessarily look like it did in 2018, right? Where it just like pops off and like three daily candles completes a cycle. It could do more of like this grinding uptrend thing. But look at this, like ZRX is showing us, you know, it's showing us the way. It really is. It's showing us how these reversals come in. And it's not just ZRX. I mean, it's like also SNX. SNX, same super bullish, super bullish reversals. So the, then, okay, now I look at the altcoins. I'm like, yes, these are starting to move, son. These are reversing. Like, you're already way up on SNX if you committed. If you were committed on SNX, and when I say committed, you buy all the freaking way down, and you want to get every price level in here. You are committed. You are literally like, hell yeah, hell yeah. And I literally didn't sell any SNX here, and that might have been, I don't know, short-sighted. But it's because I'm literally looking for those 702 retracements to come in first. But when I zoom out on SNX, I literally just see an M. I just see a massive bullish M is what I see. And so I, I'm, I'm just not feeling like I need to take any snx off the table at all right you know what i mean these but it's like literally also filecoin look at this so good what do you see you see that right that's not that's a that's the clearest realest pattern it does not get realer <laughs> that's an m that's from the textbook on the weekly chart on like the all-time chart of Filecoin, these setups, and I'm just saying, like, that's one variation, SNX is another variation, and you're starting to see things like ZRX pop out of these key ranges, you know, pop above that 236 level, that's a key point to move above, um, and I'm looking to see, you know, ZRX come up here, but obviously, I'm, you know, hoping that maybe I even get a chance to buy lower, right? I would think ZRX might come all the way back down to break your hearts, back to like 70 where it popped off. They always do that, right? You're like, no, it couldn't possibly go that way. Yeah, no, it's going to go all the way to where it started again. And if it does, if it literally goes to like 70 cents, I absolutely will buy more ZRX and I'll feel good about it. I'll feel like a smart saver you know patient guy and if i if it doesn't well then i'll be glad that i did leave some on the table but i am looking to take profits on pumps like this because i think there potentially could be more buying opportunity and i'll always leave some in the market until those prophecies are fulfilled but you better believe when those fibonacci prophecies are reached 
I'm looking to take almost, you know, basically 100% of my positions out. And until then, I will take profits on these like massive RSI pumps, right? When you're like, okay, yep, you're probably out of headroom. And then it aligns with the perfect 1.618. I mean, that's like, to me, I'm like, okay, that must be like a gift from the universe. Like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you know, so in the same way that if it goes all the way back down to like 70, I'll be like, oh, another gift from the universe, you know, so that's how that works. In the meantime, you know, I'm out here hustling, dude. I'm teaching, dude. I'm trying to make some money because I'm trying to buy. I'm trying to take some profits. I'm trying to make the most of everything that I have and all my resources and stuff. And it's about art and being creative and applying your creativity to your money art. I obviously, it goes without saying that I obviously think of all this money, crypto trading, all like my portfolios are art. They're just art pieces. And I use my creativity. I don't even, you know, no one can tell you how to do it, right? You have to use your own vision and follow your own vision and preserve your art, right? That's the thing. Like think about in music, like if you're a musician, you have to preserve your art because you're probably not making a lot of money on it, right? Like no one's paying you a lot. So you have to, you know, get jobs and make money and do all this different stuff and, you know, make sick crypto trades to pay for your music habit, right? You, you, you have to do the same. So do the same thing with your money art, right? If you need to preserve your portfolios, well, go get a job and do that. You know what I mean? So that's the thing. Like I'm trying to hustle out here because I don't want to be taken out of my portfolios prematurely, but I will take a gift from the universe when I get one. Literally, because I committed to ZRX. I was buying ZRX all the way to these dark, scary levels. And so, hell yeah, I, I took some you know profits, added to my USDC stack, because if I get chances to buy like heartbreaking levels because I'm committed to this stuff, you better believe I'll do it. But here's the funny thing. These heartbreaking levels that happen you know, between you know end of January and into March, which happened all throughout the market, every freaking where, all this stuff, literally ran everything. If you were buying in those times, well, you might have just bought that reversal, right? So point is, you might, we might be through a lot of the heartbreaking shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? We might be through a lot of that. I don't know though. Well, you know, we don't know, but we're prepared for everything. But it does feel like everything's kind of coming together to complete that reversal that happened um, basically all through February into March that r was reflected on all the major indices, right? This massive ABC correction. I've got way too many lines on here. This ABC correction in that wave four down as a part of this larger cycle that goes all the way back to 2009, right? So yeah, it does seem like things are aligning here with this nice head and shoulders reversal. Um, also, it makes a lot of sense in every wave count variation that Bitcoin has bottomed it's likely to be maybe in an a b c correction right now from this inverted top right where it's an inverted top aka a bottom so it has an a b c correction that's also inverted and that aligns with our b wave and our c wave coming together somewhere around this 702 at this approximate time and so everything is good and if there's time to buy more right because look at this maybe you have some more downside on a b wave because what do we say that b wave is likely to come down to that 702 level that gives you downside which aligns with maybe zrx having some more downside altcoins have some more downside if we see that and we see some you know you know, heartbreaking moments where everyone thinks it's over and they're all quitting and they're throwing the towel and they think it's over and everything. If you see that, buy, right? So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for everybody to be devastated. That's when you know you might be close to the bottom and it's good to deploy some of your USDC coins that you were stacking when you were, you know, selling your ZRX and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, you see the money art, you preserve your art, man. Your whole life is art. So preserve your life too, right? Oh, my God.